I don't know if the country's just in a mood to be more thankful with all the things that have happened for the last couple of years, but it seems to me like everybody's getting involved this, this holiday season, and it's good to see. Um, it, I don't know what the reasoning behind it is, but it is good to give thanks. And as a Christian, it's especially important and good and fulfilling to give thanks. And uh, I know I speak for myself, I know I probably speak for all of you how thankful we all are how God has blessed us this year through everything that's happened. And uh, it is good to give thanks. It is good to be a Christian. It is good to bless God. Amen? Amen. And um, I am thankful this morning that Linda is back with us. She's been gone for so long. And, uh, so nice to have her back home. One of the great things that Linda brings to this congregation, besides being a prayer warrior and a woman of God, is Peter tags along with her everywhere she goes. And, uh, always nice to have Peter here with us. He's going to bless your hearts as he sings this morning. Yeah. 
here right now. Amen. Yeah. yeah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, we're we're going to find somebody that knows how to unprogram and reprogram all of our... Uh, what do you call those things? Thermostat. Thermostat, yeah. I guess that's what you call them. For the air conditioners and heaters. Because... Jason said all of them, all the heaters yesterday. I said all the heaters yesterday. We left last night and make sure they were set before we left. And they were flipped and it's cool in this world cool this morning. So we apologize for that. Uh, we, we better find a little booklet that tells us how to do it because it's a computerized thing. You can preset it, but you gotta know how to do it, so uh, uh, and I think us pushing buttons and trying to make a change is probably didn't help with it. So. Uh, but anyway, we're glad you're here today, and you're smiling, and I'm glad that George Cooper was here early and turned all the heaters on, so thank you, George. And uh, it's a good day to serve the Lord and love the Lord. Uh, yesterday, we had one of the pastors from the area that passed away from, actually from COVID, and uh, uh, Pastor Leonard uh, served this community for years and years and years and years. We work with him uh, a lot with the uh, feeding the homeless and feeding the hungry. And uh, for a while, we even did we did some of the it over here for him. Anyway, uh, you know he passed away, but it's a great tribute to him. We you know, we had the service here yesterday because. Uh, they need to be a big place, so we opened the doors, and literally, all the way to the back wall, we set up chairs, all of them were full, they had people standing around all the walls and out in the lobby, and uh, to honor him, and I thought, what a, what a fitting tribute from the community, and, uh, and people that just said, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for what you've done. And his, uh, not only his memory will live for a long time, but the programs that he started and the things that he did in this community will, will live on. And so uh, anyway, uh, Brother Leonard, God bless you. God bless your family. We're thankful for you. And you just simply graduated to a better place. You're now up there with, uh, with the Lord. And if he needs a food ministry, you're probably headed up. So... Uh, uh, anyway, he graduated and he was ready to go and he was happy and uh, and so we're thankful for that. I'm so glad that God loves us and God uh, created us in His image and promises us a brand new body one of these days. But I'm also glad that God is with us down here. He created joy and happiness and laughter. He says laughter is good medicine. Uh, he also says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I love that scripture. I have two little short things I'm going to read today. Uh, one was handed to me last night. I'm sure I've used it before, but uh, I, it kind of hit me funny again, so I'm going to read it. And uh, bear with me here because I've I got to read his, hand, his handwriting, okay? You know that stuff they don't teach in schools anymore? Uh, two little boys were at a wedding. When one of them leaned over to the other and asked, How many wives can a man have? His friend answered, Sixteen. Four better, four worse, four richer, and four poorer. Sixteen. <laughs> but anyway, we're glad you're here today. And you're smiling, and I'm glad that George Cooper was here early and turned all the heaters on. So thank you, George. And uh, it's a good day to serve the Lord and love the Lord. Uh, yesterday, we had one of the pastors from the area that passed away from actually from COVID. And uh, uh, Pastor Leonard uh, served this community for years and years and years and years. We work with him. Uh, a lot with the uh, feeding the homeless and feeding the hungry and uh, for a while we even did we did some of the it over here for him anyway uh, you know he passed away but it's a great tribute to him we, you know, we had the service here yesterday because uh, 
they need to be a big place. So we open the doors and literally all the way to the back wall, we set up chairs, all of them were full. They had people standing around all the walls and out in the lobby and uh, to honor him. And I thought, what a, what a fitting tribute from the community and, uh, and people that just said, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for what you've done. And his, uh, not only his memory will live for a long time, but the programs that he started and the things that he did in this community will, will live on. And so uh, anyway, uh, Brother Leonard, God bless you. God bless your family. We are thankful for you. And you just simply graduated to a better place. You're now up there with, uh, with the Lord. And if he needs a food ministry, you're probably headed up. So... Uh, uh, anyway, he graduated and he was ready to go and he was happy and uh, and so we're thankful for that. I'm so glad that God loves us and God uh, created us in His image and promises us a brand new body one of these days. But I'm also glad that God is with us down here. He created joy and happiness and laughter. He says laughter is good medicine. Uh, he also says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I love that scripture. I have two little short things I'm going to read today. Uh, one was handed to me last night. I'm sure I've used it before, but uh, I, it kind of hit me funny again, so I'm going to read it. And uh, bear with me here because i, I got to read his, hand, his handwriting, okay? You know that stuff they don't teach in schools anymore? Uh, two little boys were at a wedding. When one of them leaned over to the other and asked, How many wives can a man have? His friend answered, Sixteen. Four better, four worse, four richer, and four poorer. Sixteen. <laughs> A little seven year old boy was looking at a plaque in his church lobby listing those that were killed in service. The pastor noticed that the little boy became more and more upset until he burst into tears. Asking what was troubling him, the little boy asked, did all these people die in the 9 o'clock service or the 11 o'clock service? <laughs> Linda, it is good to see you. All right, get your Bibles and stand up with me for just a second. And uh, we're going to hold them up and honor the Word of God. Yeah, okay. And if you don't have a Bible, there's some in front of you. And uh, so hold it up high and say it with all of your heart. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same, never, 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 I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Thank you, may be seated. We're going to turn over to the 100th Psalm. Psalms 100. The Psalms known as the Psalm of and for thanks for giving thanks. This is a good one to read before Thanksgiving. So we'll turn over there to Psalms 100. And I want you to hear what it says. Shout. For joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. And his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. 
For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Isn't that a great, isn't that a great psalm? Uh, I'm going to very quickly, maybe limit this to two or three people, I'm not sure. Something that you have to be, that you're thankful for, for this year, from this year, for this year, with thanks for Thanksgiving. Something very quickly that you're thankful for. Anyone have a praise? I know you do because a lot of you told me. Okay. Yeah, that's a good gift from God, huh? Oh, the best thing about kids Yeah. All right. Yes. Several of the men in Joshua's house have had some of their uh, uh, court dates and everything postponed, and some of their uh, accusers and uh, litigation has been resolved and gone away. And that's a praise. That is great. Uh, one of the young band uh, is going to be going into the army in a few months. Yes. So those those are yeah, those are good praises. Anybody else, real quickly, have a praise? You can wave, wave your hand so I'm calling you, okay? I, good, I, health. I, good health. Good health. Good health. Yes. Good, good health is great. Yes. You guys are doing good. How you? How, how old are you? You had your birthday. So, so 89. 89 years young. That's great. Good health. All right. Somebody else, I think somebody over here had a praise. I thank the Lord for still having the freedom to gather together. Yes. Thank you, Sam. serve the Lord. Yes. You know, so many people in the world, they don't have this chance That's anymore. That's right. We need to be on our knees praying yes. that we keep this because in, the Bible says in the last days that we will... There will be persecution of the Christians. Yeah. And that's exactly what is starting today. So we need to be praying. We can't Thank you. this freedom of worship Him together. Amen. Thank you. Nail it right on the nail on the head. Thank you. Thank you. Real quick, anybody else? Yes. I think I had good parents to talk Yeah. And we just buried his mama and we had buried his dad Walt a few years ago, and uh, uh, he came from good stock that taught him right from wrong and taught him about the Lord, and then he has passed that down to his kids. And that's the way, that's the way we need to do it. Amen? Amen. All right, one more. Yes? Uh, we're uh, thankful that uh, our God is faithful. Okay. You're going to have a kid, a little kid on the way. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, we're going to read this this psalms. Uh, we're going to go through this psalm very quickly because it's got some great things in it. I want you to look at it. I want you to think. So if we could maybe put that back on the screen if we could. Psalms 100. We're going to go through it very, very uh, quickly and look at it. And first of all, he starts it off by saying, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Do you realize... The scripture says that if we don't praise the Lord, if we don't lift our voices and, and shout praise the Lord, then He'll have the rocks and the trees and the waters of the earth do it in our place. God loves to hear us praise His name and thank Him out loud and He says shout. Now, you know, sometimes shouts are not appropriate. Sometimes you... You have people that talk loud in their church service or and they're carrying on a conversation or answering their telephone that drives me crazy uh, in, uh, in the church service. So that's, that really is, he's not talking about that kind of noise. Uh, he is talking about when we praise Him, Amen. He listens. And He's saying that it is one of the ways that you can please God. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. He wants to hear shouts of praise and of thanksgiving <coughs> from every people on earth. In every language on earth. He wants to hear from us folks. And if we will not praise His name with joy and happiness, 
and smiles and laughter, then he'll just turn up the noise on the bubbling brook going down or the river or whatever and listen to it. I want him to listen to me sometimes. I want to listen to him sometimes. But he says, we as his people ought to praise his name and we ought to shout it out. Shout for joy. You know, I watch the world. And boy, they get excited about stupidness. And they get all wound up about ball teams and everything. I have to. Uh, but what a, in comparison to praising God, what a waste of time. Uh, we, we cheer one group for the 49ers, one group for the Raiders, and... Uh, one group for some other team uh, in Sacramento, Kings. Or, we, we make a lot of noise, and I see people paint their faces, and I see people bring towels and hold up banners, and they make a lot of noise. But when it's over, those people don't even know who you are and probably don't even care. God does. He loves you. He knows everything about you. He's watched you all of your life. He created you. He gave you a DNA that is different from any other person on earth. No one will ever be like you. And inside of you, He put gifts and talents and abilities. He designed a plan for your life. Do you realize He has a plan and a purpose for your life? The prophet Jeremiah said, before I was born, he had a plan and purpose for me. He gave me gifts and talents and goods. He made you special. And you ought to thank him for that. As Americans, you ought to thank him for allowing you to be born in the United States of America and celebrate the freedoms that we do. And it stands there. Celebrate the freedom not only to worship God, but to praise His name. Do not take that for granted. People around the world are trying to get over here because they don't have any of those freedoms. They've all been taken away. Let's pray that God will continue to bless this nation. And then he says in verse 2, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. And He gives two words that are there, there that are important. One is gladness, one is joyful. And here's what I want you to get out of this. Worship the Lord with gladness. He wants us to come and be happy and thankful and praise His name and he wants us to worship Him. He wants us to worship Him. God is a holy God, a righteous God. We should be in awe of Him. We should be in awe of Him and we should worship His name. It's important that we do that, folks. The Scripture also uses that we should worship Him with fear and trembling. And people get all bent out of shape over that. But He's not saying that in a negative or bad way. He's saying, recognize that He is the God of God. He is the God Almighty. And He is the one that created everything. And frankly, He is the one that's going to judge you. So we should stand not only in awe of His greatness, but we should worship Him and we should realize that we're going to stand before Him some days. So I worship Him with fear and trembling, but I'm not scared of Him uh, because He loves me. He sent His one and only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for me. Jesus was willing to go to the cross and give His life for my sins. I'm not going to be afraid of God. I'm going to be thankful, but I am going to be in awe of Him. And I am going to realize that I will stand before Him someday. So I want to find out the things that please Him. And I want to worship Him. 
And the second part of that is, he wants us to do that, not only with gladness, but he wants us to come before him with joyful songs. Now, i got to be honest with you, I don't know why God wants that. Because I sit around behind some of you, and some of you got lousy voices. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean that in a bad way. And some of you got great voices. You know, you, you get fear some folks, and they sound like angels. Uh, hey, we had the choir here, and uh, I'm telling you, uh, that, that coming out in the audience and singing in all the parks all around us, that was spectacular. But God likes even the voices that screech and they're a little off key because He's not looking for the sound of your voice. He's looking for the condition of your heart. He wants you to be joyful. That's what the Word says. Sing joyful songs. So happiness is a big thing that God created. You can't have real happiness unless you have the Lord. That's just the answer there. You can't have no happiness without the Lord. In this life, we try to fill that void, that vacuum in our life with everything. We try to put drugs there. We try to put alcohol there. We try to put sex there. We try to do all these different things. Only to come down the road of life to find out we're miserable. I am sick to read and to hear about people that are committing suicide. They have no hope. They're despondent. Oh, if I could just get them to realize there is joy in serving the Lord. They wouldn't want to do that. Singing joyful songs. God wants to hear you. Now, I'm not saying maybe that you should join the choir. And I'm not saying that you should probably be on the worship team if you're one of those street owls that are here. But I am saying, when you're driving your car, let people think you're a wacko and crazy. Sing to the Lord. When you're in your showers, turn that water on loud so it muffles the sound in the house and sing the Lord wants to hear. Praise His name joyfully. So I think we ought to do that. I sometimes find myself in my car going down the road whistling happy songs. I, uh, I like to do that. I like to do that when I'm working. Just kind of whistle a happy song. People look at you like, what are you doing? You're crazy. That's okay. I've got a happy heart, and I do it because I love the Lord. And that's why you should do it. Know that the Lord is God. Isn't that an awesome statement? We are serving the one and only true God. There are a lot of little G gods that people have made out of wood and stone and metals. And there's a lot of copycat gods that have taken some man and lifted them up. But we're, we serve the big G God. We serve God, the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The one who spoke everything into existence out of nothing. The one that can hold the entire universe in the palm of his hand. We serve the one and only true God. That is an awesome statement. And then the scripture says, He accepts us as sons and daughters, joint heirs with Jesus. A God that has everything wants only one thing. He wants us. That's what he wants. And he adopts us. You know, when you're born to a family, you're stuck with a family, and they're stuck with you. Whenever you are adopted, some people think, well, when you're adopted, that is, you, 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 you know, you, you are a person that has been left out. You're a person that was unwanted. You were cast away. And we've got so many people here that have told that. But just think, when you are adopted, parents went and picked you out and took you. You were chosen by them. God chose you and I to be His kids. He gave us a free choice, hoping that we would live for Him. But He recognizes that some won't. And He chooses the ones that will. 
You are a chosen person today because God Himself, the true God, has chosen you to be His joint heir and the heir with Jesus. And He says, it is He who made us and we are His. And just get that. Just get that in your mind. God made us. God spoke everything in existence. And by the way, I believe the word when it says that He spoke it into existence everything as He designed it in six days. You say, well, that's impossible. Yeah, to us, that's impossible. To God, what, what is time to God? It's nothing to Him. He has all the time. There is no beginning and no end. You know, right now, we watch the clock. Oh, my goodness, look at the clock. It's ticking and the seconds are going off. And, and you've got watches on and we've got another service to come in. It's all about time. With God, it's all about living with Him. There is no time. When you get to heaven, I get to heaven. It's just going to be endless time. There will be no end. We don't need to work. We will not wear watches in heaven. You won't need to go buy one of them expensive watches that syncs up with your phone and all that kind of stuff. You're not going to need to do any of this stuff because there's no time. There is eternity. And this life, as long as it is, seems so long. But when you get it compared to eternity, it's about that long. So, cheer up. Cheer up. We serve the great God. And He's the one who made us. And we are His. We belong to Him. And I just think that is such a neat scripture. We are His people. And then to just show how personal we're talking about, we're the sheep of His pasture. He's telling us like a good shepherd would tell it. A good shepherd loves His sheep. Protects His sheep. Wants to be with his sheep. He doesn't notice that his sheep stink. You know, I, I, I remember talking to a, a Mexican preacher we had that came down here, and he, he told a statement. I never forgot it. Uh, he had seen us, I think, do the little stinky shit thing or something that we did. And, uh, and he made the comment, Jesus came down and wanted to be born in that little manger in that little manger food trough in that little you know place where the animals are, a little stable. He wanted to be born there. It stinks in there. And he said he didn't want to be born there because he was going to spend all of the time with us on this earth going into stinky hearts and stinky places to save us. And that is true. He had to reach into some awful, nasty, filthy places pull some of us out. No, to pull all of us. Amen. We were all lost. We were all sinners. We all needed to be saved. And Jesus was willing to die on the cross and he knew he was going to have to go into some filthy, stinky, nasty places to lift us up. But he did it willingly. He says we're the sheep of his pasture. He's a shepherd. Shepherds are like stinky sheep. But that's what they do. And that's what Jesus did. Because he loved you and he loved me. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and give thanks to him and praise his name. God loves it when we take the time to thank him. Start looking at your blessings. Count your blessings. Count your blessings. And thank God. God for what He has done for you. Thank God for the things He has given you. Thank God for the times that He has healed you. Thank the Lord that Jesus came and died on the cross for you. Thank God. This Thanksgiving, don't just thank Him for things and stuff. Thank Him for saving you and changing your heart and giving you a real life a lot of folks who are committing suicide haven't found real life. They've substituted the garbage that the world has thinking that that garbage will make them happy and the garbage doesn't make them happy. God makes you happy. Thank the Lord 
enter into his courts with praise, praise his name and thank him for what he has done for you. Verse number five, for the Lord is good. Isn't the Lord good? Isn't he awesome? The Lord is good and his love endures forever. He loves us. He cares about us. He nurtures us. And it will last forever. When we get to heaven, it will never, 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 never end. The scripture says, God is love. And he loves you. And he loves me. And then he sums it up this way. His faithfulness comes through all generations. Do you realize how God is a never-changing God? The scripture says that he will be the same forever. He, will, he won't change. If he made you a promise, he's going to keep it. He's faithful. I appreciate people at the church. Well, I appreciate people that have faith, yes. But I appreciate people because of their faith are faithful. Those two words go together. When you have people that say, I will take a ministry, or I'll take a class, or I'll drive a bus, or I'll be in the sound team, or I will be in the library taking, make sure that people have books to, to look at and to read, and CDs to play, and DVDs, and movies and stuff that we have all available in there, and they are faithful to be there, that is an awesome thing. The, we, there are so many faithful people behind the scenes that you don't ever hear their name mentioned, but they're faithful. They're faithful and you can count on them. God loves faithful people. And he says here, he is a faithful God. A faithful God means he will not change. And he will keep his word. And he, if he said he would do it, he's going to do it. He's faithful. He's faithful to all generations. I've thought about this fact that we have a lot of generations. I don't know. I, I, I forget the name. God really creates some of these stupid names. But I don't know. We're, we're, we're at Generation Z now or something. Some, some other generation before them. Uh, but it doesn't make any difference. Uh, there, there have been lots of generations on this earth. He's faithful to every generation. Now, we've had probably five different generations in this church. Uh, and to be honest with you, uh, it's hard to have stuff that interests all five generations. They don't tend to like the same music. So we've tried to have different services with different music so they could have music that at least they could tolerate. And, uh, well, true. In, in different uh, generations, like different styles of teaching, different styles of preaching. I mean, it's just a, a fact. Uh, you know, I've heard people, we, we, we're back there singing these songs uh, that, uh, that are telling the story of Jesus, and we sometimes call those uh, gospel songs, and, and we have the hymns that, some beautiful hymns that, uh, that, that you sing. But younger, the younger generation, though, and you, you get upset with them because they go, but the truth of the matter, you do that to their music. You know, it's just a fact of the matter. Every generation is different. We all, we all, as we live, want to be different, to stand out from the generation before. But the truth of the matter is, we really all want the same thing. We want to be loved and we want to have happiness in our heart and we want to have God and we want to please God. We just do it in different ways. And so I'm going to challenge you today Thanksgiving. You're going to have a lot of different ones you're going to be thanking the Lord with. And some you're not going to like the hairstyle. And some it's going to turn you off because they got a, a ring in their ear or a ring in their nose or their belly button or they got, you know, 
Well, I mean, or, or they've got tattoos on every inch of their body. I mean, be honest. What you need to do is just show them the love of God and realize that God loves them too. I have found that love wins more battles than anything else. When you love people and you're kind to people and you speak to people softly and respect them, they'll end up doing it back to you. But when you bark at them and scratch at them and, and fall like fingernails on the bike board, and when you're, you're, you know, telling them, it's my way or the highway, you're in my house and you're going to listen to me. You don't win nothing with that. Except you kick them out and never come back. You don't want to do that. Love will change hearts. Love will make a difference. God loved us despite the fact that we were dirty, rotten, lousy sinners who deserved hell. And he loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross and pay the price to wash away our sins. And we need to learn to love. He said in the Ten Commandments, the first four, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, all your strength. But the last six, he says, is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do you like somebody to always be screaming at you, fighting with you, knocking you down? No, you don't like that. Well, then don't do it to them. So that's my little sermonette thrown in there for Thanksgiving because you'll face some of that, okay? This Thanksgiving, join hands at the Thanksgiving table and pray and thank the Lord for all that He has done. Thank the Lord. And even thinking for the grandkids and the great grandkids and the great 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 grandkids. Let me have so many. I think somebody had that name. Uh, <laughs> I think Johnny's got great 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 grandchildren. I think. Look, just praise their names and love on them and let them know. They're important to you and they're important to God. It makes a big difference. Join hands together as a family. And Johnny, you could even lead a song, but most of the rest of them can't. And, um, look, say a prayer with me. Great, 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 great psalms. And uh, if we read it and do what it says, amazing what God will be able to do with us. Let's stand together. We're going to sing a few verses. And while you're standing, I want to remind you that this is a part of the service where we uh, give you the opportunity to pray. Uh, the altars are open. Uh, there will be prayer partners here that can pray with you. And uh, I want you to know that uh, they're here for that. I also forgot to tell you something, I, and I'll put their coming part I tell you. Uh, when we did our Joshua House banquet, we decided this year to, uh, although it would take another 24 hours, uh, to go ahead and fix another 24 hour set of brisket. And, uh, and we, we've got it out there if you want it for your Thanksgiving dinner. It's pretty, pretty neat to have. But uh, the neat thing about the brisket is I went online and looked at the price. I about gagged when I found out how much it was. Uh, Dickie's here was just a regular, regular size brisket. It's like $168. Well, we're doing a halves for 25 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. It is for Joshua House. So uh, if you have an interest in that, they've got it out there in the lobby. I didn't tell you earlier. I forgot. And then we've got a special prayer request. Pat Wren's granddaughter, Athena, two years old, is in the hospital with RSV and pneumonia. Uh, they're having to bathe her in ice baths 
Uh, the curler fever. Wow. And so we're going to anoint uh, Yvonne with oil and uh, up front while we're having prayer. If any of you want to come and join, touch, reach over and touch her. We we'll pray for her. At least put your hand out to say that I'm agreeing in prayer. We're going to ask the Lord to do a miracle on uh, this baby's uh, little body. Say it to Johnny Worm. I'm going to have you uh, lead that prayer, okay? For Athena. Athena. That's the baby. Yeah, two year old baby. Well, Welcome. Frank Copeland fell this morning. And right. He's in the hospital. He needs our prayers. That was my next one. And Frank Copeland fell, and it was, uh, he, he needs our prayers. He, he's in the camera right in a really bad way. And we need to pray for him. The whole, the whole family is asking us to pray. So, um, Johnny, you lead, uh, you lead a prayer for Yvonne. And I need a man to stand here. Dennis? Okay, I need a man to stand in here for uh, for Frank Copen. So, George, would you stand in for Frank? Stand up here and we'll pray. Jo Johnny, uh, George Cooper is going to stand in and be anointed for Frank. And then we've got Yvonne being anointed for the little two-year-old baby. Okay? And so uh, we're going to ask you to lead us in prayer at the back way. If you want to agree in prayer for these two. Uh, the book of James says that if you have somebody to speak, call for the elders of the church to anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. That's a promise that was given to us. So I'm going to ask you, Johnny, to lead us in that prayer. And they're not here, but listen, God is here, and God is also over there. So when we pray here, it's reaching across to where they're at. All right? So we're, we're going to do it. Johnny, you pray for us. Our Father, we thank you once again for allowing us to come into your presence in behalf of these requests this morning. We think of this baby, Lord, and it's beyond our ability to think even why things like this happen to little ones. But you know, and Lord, you're the one who created her in the first place. And we just pray, Lord, that you will uh, let your will be done in her life. And if it be possible, Lord, we pray that you would raise her up to let her grow up to be the kind of a young lady that you would have her to be. We pray, Lord, that uh, you would help us to realize that we need to band together yes. as family and support these people. That's why I come to church. Yep. Lord, because I know that I can get help when I'm going through the dark places. Mm -hmm. And I can see out there or reach out there and feel those people that are here in behalf of, uh, of, of you, Lord, love you and, and, and exonerate your name. And we know, Lord, because of their faith that we can rely upon you to do their will, do, do our will. We just thank you, Lord, for who you are. We pray for Frank this morning. Lord, he's been faithful, mm -hmm. really faithful mm -hmm. through the years. And he's been a prayer warrior. He's been uh, a, a, a follow the Lord that believes in you and, and your ways. And he always participates, Lord, in things that need to be done here at the church. He used to come to our prayer meeting. And we appreciate the fact that he would come on behalf of the church and pray for the needs represented here like we're praying now. And we pray, Lord, that you were here to heart's cry on behalf of these people. But most of all, we pray, Lord, you would help us to be the kind of people mm -hmm. you want us to be. We love you, Jesus, this morning more than we did yesterday because we're one day closer home. And we appreciate the fact that you are able to help us be the kind of people that you want us to be. Grant it, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Name above all names. Amen. Amen. Amen.
dismissed in the name of the Lord. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving.